co-pastor will begin our lesson today. Amen. Praise God. On last week, we left off talking about that we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, for being saved is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. That's the ninth verse. Then it goes on into verse 10 and say, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I'm going to stop right there and go back. It says, For we are his workmanship, meaning that God created us Amen. to be Christ like. Yeah. And we are to do the good works of Christ. So that's what, what we have to understand what separate us from, from being saved and unsaved. When we were unsaved, we were still created to do his work. We was, we was created by his workmanship, but we wasn't in the place. Amen. I want to use for an example, uh, it may be, I, I'm, I'm going to use Brother Robert. I was talking about him today. He said that he always wanted to drive a bus. Well, he learned he drove a truck for years. But what he wanted to do was drive a bus. So I'm just comparing this to being unsaved and saved. Okay, so in those years, he still was able to drive, but he wasn't driving the bus. Okay, let me take it to the spirit realm. We were created to do the work of God, but we wasn't doing it. But when we became when we become saved through grace, by faith, we are to do the good works of Christ. That's why everybody that say they're saved, if you don't see a change in their life, is something that you almost got work to be done on those stuff. We, we, this, this is a day-by-day -day process. Nobody is saved that that's all I got to do. I can go sit down now and say no, salvation is a day-by-day day process. Yeah. That's why we are his workmanship. We were created in Christ for the good works, which Christ prepared, which he ordained. And in, in the New King James Version, it says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Remember, before the foundation of the world, he had already done everything. So everything that we are doing now and going to do in the future for Christ, he had already preordained it before the foundation of the world, before our mamas and daddies got together, before they were ever born and on back from it, but before the foundation of the world. We were created for workmanship. We was created to work for God. Yes. You know why you gifted to do what you can do? Because there's a gift in you yes. that God can use. Amen. There is a work in you. You know why you created? Not just because you uh, Sister Tomato's daughter. No. You, cre you were created and wondrously made yes. so you could do the work of God. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Yes. In other words, if you look in the Bible, the, the Jews, anybody that wasn't a Jew was considered a dog, a Gentile. We wasn't even good as a dog. But in times past, we were Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is circumcised in the flesh by hands. Okay. Now we know that when boys are born, they circumcise. But in the Bible, when it's talking about circumcision, it's also talking about the circumcision of the heart to peel back and to cut away. But in, in that day, the Jews were circumcised. Remember David called uh, Goliath the uncircumcised giant? Because he wasn't a Jew like him. So he was uncircumcised. He, you ain't know why. Because at that time, circumcision was almost like a religion. And it was something that they done as a part of showing, I'm a Jew, so I'm better than you. But that, and, and God, the word is saying here, Paul is saying here, that in time past, you was a Gentile in the flesh. 
who are called uncircumcised. Let me break it down to now they turn. At one time, you weren't even saved. You was looked upon as whatever you done. If you was a person that, that drank, you was a drunk. If you was a person that smoked up, you was a drug addict. If you was a person that, that fornicated, you was considered a fornicator. You were, people didn't even know you by your name. That come that on? Why? When we was unsaved. But now that we are saved, now everybody ain't going to speak good of you. Then when everybody do speak good of you, you got to check yourself too. But the Bible tells us that Christ gives us a new name. So when once we were, and, and, and here it said we're just called by circumcision in the flesh by the hand. Talk about when the Jews and stuff, they circumcised with their hand. You, a Gentile was a nobody. But when Jesus came and died on that cross, we became one. We became, and we get on down the end. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We became heirs and joint heirs with Christ. So, Jesus was better than, I mean, he was more than a Gentile, so I'm more than a Gentile. Why? Because I'm a joint heir with Christ. Yeah. Amen. Uh, as we go to the, the second chapter, the 12th verse, we read uh, that at that time, ye were without Christ. And where, what Paul is talking about now is before you came to Christ, ye were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. What that really means that before you came to Christ, you had no spiritual rights. You had no you, you had no right to the things of God. It says aliens, it's like a uh what you call a person that's from another country. A foreign a foreign a foreign, a foreign alien or something. I don't think exactly what I'm talking about. Illegal alien, thank you. <laughs> Illegal alien. Uh, and so you are uh, not even accepted into uh, the things of God. And when, you, when you are an illegal alien, you don't have a right to the things of God. This was before you got saved. That was, this is the point of being saved. It gives you legal authority to have some rights. As a citizen of the United States, you have a legal right in the things of God. But before, but, but if you were not a citizen, uh, you, you don't have a legal right to certain things. And um, if, if, if they were they ready for you to go or whatever they want you to go, you use every time, you, they, they will deport you. And so many times we as believers don't understand that when we came to Christ, it gave us citizenship to the things of God. Um, we, were, um, we were being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Commonwealth means to, it, it, everybody in there got the same, same, they, they try to make everybody equal. They try to make everybody the same um, um, level of being blessed, or the same level of having something. And so um, we, we were aliens to that commonwealth, and everybody in Israel was the same. If, if you had some, I had some. If you was blessed, I was blessed. Ain't no, I'm up here and you down here. But before Christ, we was aliens to this. But now in Christ, we have access to this. So many of us. Where we miss it is, we have access to something. Have you ever, have you ever had uh, something that was owed to you or some kind of benefit that you could have had? Uh, or, or say something on your car that you didn't know how, that, that you didn't know was in your car that you could use. And you've been driving around for years in your car and not using what was that. Amen. Or you've been having, well, you could have had this a long time ago and you're not using what you had had. So many of us, we have uh, benefits and blessings and things and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a close relationship with God that's available to us and we sit up there and even use it. Amen. We got, and, 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 and sometimes we, we spend money for something that we don't have to spend money on. We could be saving money. For example, for example, for just, just trying to keep you understanding. For example, at one time, um, and now don't nobody have, very few people have house phones. Everybody has cell phones. 
I thought that uh, in order to have Wi-Fi, I had to have a house phone. So I was paying for Wi-Fi and a house phone. And so and one day the man came to do something to the, to the Wi-Fi and so, and we was talking. I said, well, I don't you have to have Wi-Fi, have a house phone, have Wi-Fi. He said, no, you don't have to have it. So by me paying both bills, I had a, a phone bill and a Wi-Fi bill. But when I cut the phone bill off, that, that blessed, that made me the same money that I did not have to spend. And so many of us, we're missing it because we're not utilizing the benefits of our salvation that God's given us. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and a lot of times, when you have benefits of something, something you get, the people ain't going to tell you. They, 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 they'll know, they be sitting right there and know you could have it, but they ain't going to call and tell you. Uh, they just going to let you go on and, and, and just do what you got to do. But if you make them aware, and so what we have to do, we have to search the word of God, and we're going to see, we're going to see, and, and, and sometimes this is crazy, but, but, but we're going to see that some of the things in the word of God is, on oh, and, and y'all get this, y'all remember this, is a mystery on purpose. Amen. Can I say it again? It's Amen. a mystery on purpose. But Bishop, why is the mystery on purpose? Because God wants you to seek him for the answer. Y'all get that? Amen. God wants you to seek him for the answer. So he hides it so it needs to see if you're going to look for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let me go on. Uh, strangers from the covenants of promise. As I already said, they're talking about the covenants of promise. A covenant is for us to, to bring to a world where we can understand it's a contract. A covenant is no more than a contract. And all of us over here, in here um, you have to be 18 to sign a contract. Um, all of us in here that's over 18, um, we probably have to sign a few contracts. If you, if you, if you live somewhere, if you, if you bought it, you sign contracts for a mortgage. If you rent it somewhere, you done sign a lease. That's a contract. If you buy a car, you gotta sign a contract. If you, uh, anything you do, you got to make an agreement, and it is agreement between you and the person that's providing you what you want, and whatever it is, and you have an agreement, and you have you have your part you got to keep up, amen? Amen. And that person got that part they got to keep up. And if somebody breaks the contract, the contract is null and void. Yes. Okay? Amen. Now, this is what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Jesus came and did everything for your contract to stay intact. Yes. All he asked us to do, Jesus said, I've done all things, everything I need to do, what I want you to do right now is live for me. Amen. Y'all got that? Amen. Jesus said, I done died for you and all I want you to do is live for me. Praise God. Amen. So we have, we have covenants of promise, not Having no hope, that's before we were saved, we didn't have no hope. We were strangers to the covenants of promise. We had no hope and without God in this world. You were in the world without God. Amen. And that's why we as people, we cannot get complacent with people that don't know Christ. Because anybody don't have Christ in their life, they are in this world without God. Amen. I'm going to let this soak in for a second. They are in this world without God. And we are sitting here knowing the things of God, full of the Spirit of God, understanding the Word of God, and our spirits are not, should not be settled that they are in this world without God. Amen. And not just our children, yes, our children are included. Not just our family members, yes, they are included. Not just people we don't know, but anybody that we see and they don't have Christ in their life, they are in this world without God. And I come today to let you know, this world is designed to kill them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that one Amen. more time. Amen. This Amen. world is designed to kill them. Amen. They end this world without God. Thank you, Jesus. 
But now in Christ Jesus, now that you're in God, in Christ Jesus, whenever you read the scripture in the New Testament, and it talks about being in Christ, and any man be in Christ, holy, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It's talking about your relationship with God or your covenant with God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, I can do all things, another thing, I can do all things through Christ. Amen? But, uh, that strengthens me. So anytime, anytime when, when the Bible connects us to Christ, it's talking about our relationship with God. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometime was a far off, are made nigh, which means near. Uh -huh. You're made near, how? By the blood of Christ. We, made, we are made near by the blood. So before I was separated, I was I, I was I was all I, I was an alien. I was a stranger. I didn't have any promise. I didn't I didn't I, 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 I didn't have no hope. I was in the world all by myself. But now, since I'm in Christ, I have made been brought near to God yes. by the blood of Christ. Christ. By the blood. For He is our peace. Yes. He is our peace. Who have made both. One, he is our peace. The blood gives us peace. Yes. And the blood made me one with Christ. Yes. This is what Jesus did. Jesus, I come and die for you to bring it to a place where we can understand it. Have, have it, all of us in here the business school when you done had a test that was hard, that 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 that, that, that was hard, and and and, and may, may not you were may not prepared for the test. But what Jesus said, I will take the test for you, yes. and I will make an 100 for you. But all I ask you to do, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay? Yes. Now, uh, make not my blood. Who hath made both one, and hath broken down, watch this, the middle wall of petition between us. There was a wall of, of dividing between you and God. Right now, it's all this is talking about between you and God. The blood does it. The blood gives us peace that made us one with God who has broken down the wall of petition between me and God. So what the devil wants to do is separate you and then he wants to put stuff between me and God. But because of the blood, me and God are one. Because of the blood, the walls of petition has been broken down. When we moved in, there, when we first got this building, those that was here, uh, they had put they had put offices in here, made offices, made rooms, and they had where you where you see the grooves that in the wall, the cuts in the trim um, is where walls were. All in here was, was walls and everything. It, 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 I remember it was, it was so funny. Uh, it was 10 years ago, so Alicia was eight. <laughs> and we came in here and we came through the back door. <laughs> and it was a wall right there, right there, and right there, right near the car car. <laughs> and we said, This all big this is. <laughs> She probably didn't even remember what it was, but me and her came here. I said, said, is this all big this is? <laughs> because there was petition and walls uh, in, in here. And, 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 but, we, but we had to tear them down so we could uh, restore this into being a sanctuary. We had to tear down the walls. And that's what God did with Jesus down the cross the blood. We had to tear down the walls. But I, but, but I will tell you this. What Satan will try to do, and I'm trying to move on, what Satan will try to do, Satan will try to reveal those walls in your life between you and your relationship with God. He will use different tools that you can, and, 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 and so many times, you can be in church and still have a wall. That's why every day of our life, we got to ask God for the blood of Jesus. We got, because the blood tears those walls down. Yes, it does. 
we got to ask God that we, that, that's why we got to plead the blood. I know, I know, I know that's, that, that, that's something um, that, that we do in the Pentecostal church. We plead the blood of Jesus. And, 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 and what basically what the pleading the blood is, we're reminding the devil the fact of the blood of Jesus. So we understand in this scripture we see that the blood makes us one with God. And the blood of Jesus tears down the middle wall of its petition between, between me and God. So when I plead the blood, the wall's got to go. And me and God is one. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of God. Happy abolished means to have torn down, to maintain, to destroy, to destroy, to in his flesh, the enmity, which is a state of opposition. The, in, in, in Jesus' flesh, it was the opposition between him and Satan, just like us and Satan. But when Jesus came and he tore down the middle wall of petition, when he shed his blood, he abolished that enmity. And, and see, and even the law of the commandments to contain in ordinance. For to make in himself of twain one new man. Just like Bishop just forestated. When to turn down everything that would keep us from God and make us one. He made us one with him and he created a new man. And it said that behold, when, when we, 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 you know, we, all things have become new, but we are a new creature. He made us a new man. The old things I used to do, I don't do them no more. And when you find yourself doing something that you used to do, begin to plead the blood. Even Let me give uh, as an example, but it's something that happened. I was sitting there praying and I was thinking about, well, I didn't mean, wasn't thinking about it. This person popped up in my mind. And the Lord let me know the things that, the way you used to feel, you don't feel the same way. And I began to check myself, God, well, I have unforgiveness, God. I don't want to be walking around here with no unforgiveness in, in nobody. And I was praying for this person. And, and God brought, so what I began to do, I didn't make no excuses. Lord, I don't want to walk around with unforgiveness. Something in my heart that ain't right, God, please take it out. I lay it on the altar right now. I don't care how long we've been saved. When we pray, that's one thing prayer is for. God will bring stuff to the surface. You know, I, I think it's in Isaiah where it talks about, uh, the, uh, the the purifying the silver yeah. and all of the, all the impurities come to the top when we are in a relationship with God and when we pray and something come up in our spirit don't don't say well I might as well quit uh uh God work on me if that's something that's wrong with me Lord work on me right now because that's what prayer is for and to for to make in Himself. Which was two, he made one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body yeah. through the cross. Uh -huh. Thank God for the cross. We can't have salvation without the cross. Yeah. And the cross does not represent gold around your neck. The cross represents that Jesus got on that cross, hung, bled, and died and suffered for my sins. Well, co-pastor, you said that. Somebody told me that if I get saved, I wouldn't have no troubles. That's not the truth. You're going to have troubles, but you got somebody to go through it with you. Yeah. Yeah. You will have troubles, and you're going to have trouble. But because of God, we can go through anything. Why? Because we're one with him. I told y'all earlier, we heirs and joint heirs with Christ. So whatever I go through, God knows. Yes. That's why when there's something in me that's not right, I can, the closer I get to God, the more he's going to allow me to see the flesh that's enmity against God, and it's got to go. Amen. Amen. Enmity is an enemy against God. I, we can't take sin before God. Yes. So the closer you get to God, the more you will see yourself and see, that's where the enemy come in and want to confuse us and build those walls back up. See, you ain't the same as you thought you was. Oh, yes, I am. Because when I'm saved, I can see what, what's wrong with me. Yeah. When I'm not right with God is when I can't see what's wrong with me. Yes, 
Right. If if I can never take the chastening of the word, y'all know what that Bible said we was when we can't take the chastening of the word. Now, you know, we want to call our children hard-headed and all that kind of stuff, but when we can't take the chastening of the word, and the chastening of the word will either come through when you read it yourself, and then your leaders will come confirm it again. And if we can't take it, check it out what the Bible say that you are. That's right. So, but the closer you get to go, the more you're going to see yourself. Why? Because of the cross. Yeah. Because of the blood. Why? Because we've been reconciled with Jesus. And he came and preached peace to you. I'm reading out the New King James Version. Who were afar off and those who were near. So he preached to everybody. To those that was far away and those that were near. The word of God is for everybody. Amen. And I promise you. The greater our prayer life is, and Bishop is saying with me at the end of prayer, that God is calling us to a greater place in prayer. You know the reason he's calling us to a greater place? Because he got a greater work. Yeah. And the greater work requires a greater commitment. And the greater commitment causes us to see more of ourselves that we need to move out of the way. So when you see yourself, don't let the enemy confuse you and tell you that you're not saved. The closer you get to God, look, somebody that's close to you and they get on your nerves a whole lot, like your children or whatever, you know what, or your, or your mama, if you, if you looking at your mother, or your mother looking at you, or grandma or whoever, and that is just something that they do to just wrap your nerves. You know why? Because you see yourself in them. And it's really yourself you're mad at, but you take it out on them. And all of us do that. All of, all of us do that. We see ourselves in our children or grandchildren or whatever, and that, that irritates us. You know what? That's the same way it is with God. The closer you get to God, it ought to irritate you that you see yourself. Because you don't want to see yourself, you want to see more of God. Amen. You want to see more of God. Okay, I'm going to the 18th verse. It says, For through him, talking about Christ, we, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So through, through Christ, mm -hmm. God the Father have access to me. To me. God the Father has access, access to me and I have access to God. We understand what access is uh, when we have uh, a debit card or something or, uh, or you have a, a combination or you have a key, a key or a debit card access code gives you access to something that's locked up to be saved. And so through Christ, through him, we have access and God has access to us. That's the only way that we could get back to God is through Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have access by one spirit, the Holy Ghost. We have access to God. Now therefore, and God has access to us, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers. And you have access to your kingdom benefits, to your kingdom rights, to everything that comes through salvation. You have access to it. Strength, you are no more strangers or foreigners. Amen. But fellow citizens. Now, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God with the saints and of the household of God. So you are a king of God with those that know God. You are in, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You have every right and privilege of the kingdom of God. Uh, say for an example that uh, if you are uh, a certain age or whatever, you, 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 you have rights to certain benefits if you were a citizen of the United States, if you are, if you were in the military, you have certain rights and benefits that somebody that wasn't because of you, you were in, you went into to battle and you were in the, the armed services. It gives you rights 
and benefits that other people can't get because they do not qualify. When Jesus died on the cross, he made you qualify for all of the rights and the benefits of the kingdom of God. Can somebody say with me, say, I qualify. When you were born again when, because of the blood, when you were made one with Christ because of the blood, when you have access to God and God has access to you by the Spirit because of the blood, you have all rights of the kingdom. You have them. You don't have to try to get them. You don't have to try to do nothing. You have, you have, you have the rights. We miss the benefits of it when we don't use them. Amen. Okay. One of our main benefits is prayer. When you don't pray, you don't have the right of the benefit of prayer. When you don't study your word or know what's in your contract, your last will and testament of the Bible, when you don't know what's in your contract, it can be available for, to you. And then because you never use it, you can't benefit from it. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Say, continue what Bishop said. It was said, because we are born again, we have been built on the foundation of, of the prophets and the apostles. Meaning that the same God, the same spirit that saved them, saved us. The same benefits that they have, we have. So many times. We sell ourselves short because of who we are. Yes. Or because, we're, you know, let me take it to the natural. When, when, when we was growing up, I, I don't know about y'all, but when we were growing up, it was certain places we didn't feel like we fit in because they may have had a little bit more than us or they may have had a little bit. So you stayed with the people that had the same thing you had and they stayed with the people that had the same thing. But when Jesus died on the cross, he took all that away. But we have the same right because uh, we are built up on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, what they preach, what they teach. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yeah. If anybody is preaching something other than Jesus Christ and him crucified, hung, bled, and died on the cross, it is not a God. And so many times, nowadays, people get caught up in stuff. They get caught up in the mega churches. Thank God for them. I don't have nothing against them. They get caught up in the rise. They get caught up in stuff, 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 stuff. I can name a whole lot of stuff. But God, help me to stay caught up in souls. Yes. Help me to stay. What Jesus came for was to save a wretch like me. That if that's what I thought I was when I was worried about where I lived at and I was at, you know, as a kid, that wasn't the problem. It was when I wasn't a citizen in the kingdom of God. But now that I am a citizen of the kingdom of God, I have a right to the benefits. Yeah. The prophets and the apostles taught that Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Everything is built around Jesus. And this is what I really like. In whom all the building fitly framed together growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. It's not talking about the building but it's talking about us. But if you take the building and and, and it's been removed on the outside of this church, but there, there be a building block where people put, you know, when a church was established and all this kind of stuff. That's the cornerstone. But in the spirit realm, we're talking about Jesus being our chief cornerstone. And everything that we do will fit with the word of God. Everything that we, and I'm not talking about what we do in the flesh. I'm talking about what we do in the spirit. Because see, in the flesh, we'll mess up. But I'm so glad because we fit the join together, just like I said earlier. God will bring things to your mind and tell you, uh-oh, you got some stuff you need to straighten up. Yeah. And you know what? God is so good. He won't tell you you got to straighten. He'll let you see. He'll, he'll let you look over in your soul and see, oh, God, that, 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 oh, 
God. That, that's just saying, you ever felt some kind of way sometimes? But what we do, we put it on somebody else. You know, I, I'm just using you, Mother Allen. Mother Allen was looking at me funny today. Uh-uh! You got something that you need to straighten out, but it's easier to throw it off on somebody else. But when we fitly join together, I didn't forget where I was at. We grow it unto a holy temple unto the Lord. A holy temple is a soul without a spot of wrinkle. In whom ye are built together for a habitation of the Spirit of God. Through the Spirit. Habitation of God through the Spirit. We come together. So we can have a habitation that the Spirit of God can dwell among us. Not that yet. We praise God at home. We worship the Lord at home. You better worship Him right down the road. You better praise Him in Walmart. You better praise Him in food bag, Kroger's, or wherever you at. You better do that. But when we come together, where the habitation of the Lord is already on the inside of us, and we come together and we be fit to join together, oh, what a time, what a time, what a time. But in the spirit, when we get to the place where God is calling us to, we ought to be able, we ought to be spiritual twins. I heard that identical twins, if one hurt, the other one hurt, we ought to be spiritual identical twins. Yeah, when you got, you know, we always want to talk about her. But when you got joy, I want to have joy too. Amen. When God is blessing you, I want to be blessed too. I ain't talking about my stuff. You might just be, you might need a blessing in your body. And because God is blessing you and we spiritual twins and the habitation of the Lord is in us and we fit the joy together, we all feeling good. Amen. That is what the spirit of the Lord is for. That's why Jesus Hung bled and died on Calvary's cross. He knew this before the foundation of the word. And I praise God for the simplicity of the word of God. Our body is the temple of God. That's where the spirit of God dwells. When he's talking about the temple, yes, the spirit of God comes up in this place, but the, our bodies is the temple of God. That's why I said we ought to be spiritual twins. That when you feeling good, I might be having a rough day, but because you got so much joy and we 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 have dwelled together and, and, and God I need a boost today. And I'll be able to get to, to feel you. Our bishop was preaching Sunday, and I'm not going to call the person's name, but bishop was preaching Sunday, and I saw the anointing of the man of God that anointed him when he first, when he became an elder. I saw it all over. For a minute, I was like, oh, bishop looking like, and that's the way God is. God is that kind of God that the anointing will come upon you. When you need it the most, or when you in a place, but the anointing of God, because that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of God. That's why we can't do it. I'm getting ready to stop. That's why we can't do everything to this body. Because this body don't belong to us. This body belongs to God. This, this body belongs to God. And I am learning and help me to learn the more God with, with something going on in this body. Okay, God, this is your body, ain't mine. You just let me use it. I, I need you to touch it. Good and bad. I need you to work because we are the temple of God. And this is where he wants to be fitly joined together in, until, until we grow into the temple of God, the holy. Amen. We praise God that God has let us come through the second chapter. Now we're going to the third chapter, the first verse. Uh, let's, read, let's look at it. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. When I get out of that, we understand in this epistle, and I think three others of Paul's epistles, his letters, was written from prison. Um, uh, and Paul, and a lot of times what we do in the natural, we let our personal situation 
dictate our thinking pattern. Amen. Okay? But when he says, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ, what he is saying, I am not going to let what I mean overpower who I am. Can I say it again? Yes. I'm not going to let what I mean overpower who I am. Even though I am in prison, prison. If I'm going to be in a prison, the only prison I'm going to be in is the prison of Jesus Christ. I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. My situation will not affect me to the point that I deny Jesus as a Lord of my life. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> my situation will not affect me to the point where I deny Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life. And that's why we got to be, whatever you are in, I'm in this, but I'm in it with Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. In this, in this text, we, in, in this book, we see a lot of talking about Gentiles, and, and, and for us, that don't make no sense, but, but for us, it would be more like um, a race. When the Bible talks about Jews and Gentiles, they're talking about a race of people. They're talking about your race and your origin. And so, what they're saying, Paul says, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Paul's ministry was to the Gentiles. His ministry was to the people that was not his common everyday people. Can I say this to all of us in here? And because all of us are called to ministry. God will call you to minister to somebody that's not like you. Amen. And so one thing we got to do is what the enemy does, he builds up, like we said earlier, talking about the walls, he builds up walls of division uh, in the house of God, in the, in, in the country, and one of the walls he builds up is the wall of racism. But I believe God that we as the people of God if we are consistent in prayer, we can tear down the walls of division. Amen. Amen. The walls of racism. Do y'all remember the story when Jesus met the woman at the well? Um, she says, Jews and, 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 and Gentiles and, 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 and Samaritans don't have any dealings with one another. That was talking about race. We, 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 we have to, we have to uh, break down the walls of racism yes. in the house of God. Amen. First of all, and, 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 and whenever God does something, I know this when you look at history, whenever God does something, even as far as um, civil rights, or even as far as um, um, the abolishment of slavery, we always see, and y'all gotta look at this, the church somewhere in the picture. Racism, civil rights, always have been changed because of something that went on in the church. So if God is going to do something to change racism, it's not going to come from the world. Y'all get that? Amen. It's not going to come from the world. It has to come inside, from inside of the house of God. Praise the Lord. And so many times the devil tells us, oh, what can you do? You can't do nothing else. And, 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 and we deminimize the power of God. That's and right, we make Jesus. this statement. Right. You can't do nothing but pray. That's the greatest thing you ever could do. Pray. Is pray. So don't ever say, we can't do nothing but pray. Prayer is the biggest, because if, if we do anything that's going to accomplish anything, it has to have the foundation of prayer in order for it to work. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, and so Paul, his, his assignment was to minister to people and break down racial barriers. So, so in, 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 and also this, even when it comes to Pentecostalism, uh, that's, that's, that there were two organizations that started uh, in ministry. And both of them started out as one because when people first started receiving of the Holy Ghost in the early 1900s, about 100 years ago, and speaking in tongues in this country, um, in Azusa Street, it was two organizations that were started, 
and they were um, multiracial. There was white and black, praising God. If you went to the Zulu Street, you'll see white back in this was in the early when uh, segregation was real and the Jim Crow laws was real. Um, you, you, you will see um, in, in, in the Zulu Street, um, you will see different races and people coming together um, and praising God and being saved and being delivered and, and speaking in tongues. But after they went back and started organizing, um, they start, they divided. They, they divided, they separated. Uh, uh, one, one, and, and I don't want to call the wrong name, so I ain't gonna say the name though, because I want to be correct if I call it. I uh, want to be correct if I call it. It was one organization, they separated. Um, the, all the black uh, preachers went one way, and the white preachers went one way, and they started the one organization, and the white black had the one organization. And so that's what happened uh, in the church. This God wants to break down these walls and these separations uh, of Amen. racism of, and, and uh, of, 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 of sexism and uh, any kind of any kind of division. When I say sexism, I mean with gender a relationship. Women can't do this, and women are lesser, and men are greater. God wants to break down all those walls of division and understand that we all are one in Christ Jesus. One. As the, the, the Bible says in Genesis, it says it's neither a Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. So in Christ, all of us are one, and God wants to break those walls down. Um, and that was Paul's assignment in, at, in his apostleship. I want, I want us to question ourselves tonight. What is your spiritual assignment in the spirit? What has God called you to do? What has God called you to do? He's called you to break down some walls. Um, um, and, and he called you to a certain people. If ye have heard of this dispensation, dispensation is a type of a span of time. It's a span of time. Now, and, and, and we're living right now. You're living in the span of time and the dispensation of grace. We're living in the time dispensation of grace. That's one reason you, you see in the Bible uh, where, where, where God would, uh, like, you got, uh, what's this, Moses' sister, brother, got leprosy. Miriam and Aaron, uh, they, they, they were struck with leprosy because they spoke to man of God. You know what, God ain't doing that now? Because we in grace. We have the grace of God. Uh, and, and, but we have the same God. He can't do what he wants, but the reason why God ain't striking folk down. But doing stuff, people cursing God, people denying God, people were, uh, uh, speaking against uh, speaking against God. Uh, it was the story in the Bible. Uh, one of the prophets, uh, the children laughed at him because he was bald headed, and they laughed at him. And the bear came out of the woods and attacked attacked the prophet. The reason why stuff like that ain't happening because of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. But, but 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 we don't know how. But when Jesus comes back. This dispensation is going to be over. We're not going to be in the grace of God. The grace of God is not going to be in another dispensation. So we're in the dispensation of grace, the grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord. How that by revelation, revelation is revealed true, truth being revealed or mysteries being uncovered. Revelation. Truth being revealed and mysteries being uncovered. How that by the revelation he made known unto me the mystery. So God wants to make known unto us the mysteries of God. As I wrote a far off in a few words. There are mysteries of Christ. There's a mystery of God that God wants us to, I told you earlier, he wants us to seek him in order for us to find out. One of the mysteries, and this is something that's, um, and it, I'm not saying it's as bad as mine, it's just been a real curry or something. The one, one mystery of God that, that sometimes it's hard for people to understand that has to be revealed is the mystery of the Godhead or the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost or the oneness of God. That's a mystery, a mystery that has to be revealed through revelation. And God, and God is yet giving us the revelation of it. So uh, Paul knew his assignment. He, 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 he operated in this dispensation of grace that was given unto him towards them. And 
uh, God is letting us know that he wants to make known unto us or reveal unto us the mysteries of God. So the Bible also tells us another verse. It says, if any man lacketh the wisdom, let him ask. So sometimes you gotta ask God, show me what that is. Show me what you're saying. Let me understand it. And it's not, it's not saying that you know, it's just a mystery. Amen. You gotta, you got to look at the clues to find out what the mystery is. Amen. Amen. It says, whereby when you when ye read, that ye may understand my knowledge in the mysteries of Christ. Again, to take it back. He wants to reveal to us the mysteries, but the key word in this verse is read. Amen. Whereby, when ye read, that ye may understand my knowledge in the mysteries of Christ. Um, a few weeks ago, Elder Smith and, and I and somebody else who we did come in and we wanted to do something, and this brought this back to my mind. Elder Smith said, let's go to, I don't even know the name of it, but you go to a place and you figure out clues how to get out of the room. I said, no, y'all not taking me up in nowhere like that. And, and uh, I don't even know the name. But anyway, you got to figure out a clue how to get out. And this, this is the same. If you take that and put it to this, you got to read the work. You ain't going to figure out a clue, but God going to show you a mystery. In another passage of scripture, he said, I will show you a mystery. And God wants to show us a mystery. God, why you want to be mis mis mysterical? Because he wants us to get a relationship with him. Because some things, the only thing we're going to find out is through a relationship. Because yeah. you know what? If you're not in a relationship with a person, you ain't going to tell them your business. You ain't going to tell them that most secret and dear thing to your heart. Because you ain't in that kind of relationship with them. Because if you live long enough or uh, have long enough, the young people in here, if you haven't lived long enough, keep living. And you will find out who really with you and who's not with you. So, most of us in here that got a little bit of age on us, we have been hurt by folk that we done told our stuff. But God wants to show us a mystery, but the way to find the mystery is we got to read. Yeah. That's why the enemy want to block us. Remember, go this see him for freedom. That's why he want to, he's why he want to block us from reading. Always back to the time of slavery and even before. The enemy wants to stop because if you read, you get knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you get knowledge, you get understanding. You get understanding, you'll learn some mysteries. Which in other ages was not made known unto the son of men, as it is now revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. We know in the back in the Old Testament, that the Spirit just came upon certain people. Only certain people could go behind the veil and pray. Only the priests had the anointing, and it only came at certain times. But now, since Jesus came and died on the cross, we all have a right, and mysteries is being known, made known unto us, which was not made known unto the Son of Men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Remember the word of God said, holy apostles and holy prophets. Not talking about the nomination, he's talking about those that live holy unto God. That the Gentiles, us, those that were, that wasn't saved, that was considered a nobody, should be fellow heirs in, and of the same body, and of the part and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Y'all, do y'all hear what we got a right to? The prompt we are fellow heirs of the same body yes. and partakers of the promises yes. in Christ by the gospel. Yes. Why you gotta read so we can find out what the promises is. Why you gotta read so you can find out how a fella heir is supposed to be act. That a fella, what the fella, because if you don't know what you're supposed to get, you ain't gonna get it. That's right. 
You're not going to get it. So say this what you mean, real short. Bishop and I, Brenda, we had went to try to get a car one time. Everybody denied us. We thought we were going to go get a car, so we had rented the car. We was on our way to Georgia. Somebody, the car lot called us, told us we had a car. So we took the rental car back, and even the people at Enterprise, we had got some windows open on the, on the van, because we got a van. We couldn't get them closed. They even tried to get them closed. We didn't know how to open the car. We just mashed the buttons, figured out stuff. We in a new car like kids in the a new toy, trying to drive and figure out what was going on. Well, we had got all the way to Georgia, and I said, well, I wonder what this button is right here. And the windows closed. Didn't know what I said that to say that we have something, but we don't know what we got. You know why? Cause we don't. Mr. M told me last night we was blowing up a thing of his, a little football man. He said, "Grammy, you gotta read the M instructions." I said, "What?" And he threw the book out at me. He said, "You gotta read the M instructions." Even a four-year-old know that we need to read the instructions. The Bible. The, the Bible is our instructions from earth to glory. But we got to read it to know what we got. We got so much, but we don't know what we got because we don't read the instructions, which is the word of God. And as Bishop said earlier, we got access to a whole lot of stuff that we don't use. Yes. We got access to the promises. We all partake of the promises. But, so, but when we walk around broke, busted, and disgusted, I'm talking about spiritually now. What, don't nobody want to hear us talk about no promise that we always on the down. We, we always the one broke down. We always the one complaining. When we got Jesus, we got to think up. You might be going through severe pain, but you, we got to think higher than where we are. I, I think the, 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 the theme of Preaching, and I was uh, had to have a topic. I was, our topic tonight we read the contract. All right, so, <laughs> read, the contract. read the contract. That's what God is saying to us tonight. You have to, in order to benefit from your salvation, you have to read your contract or read the covenant to know what you have access to. Amen. Okay, we, we almost we almost finished. We're gonna have a question in a minute, but let me come over here. Um, two more verses. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. One of the, one of the things, and, and a lot of us, and this, this may hit, I know what it hit the, 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 the ministers here tonight, uh, and it probably hit everybody. One of the things that Paul had to 